The 2017 AACR Annual Meeting in Washington, D.C. is a very exciting meeting for us. First, it's the largest meeting, of course, across the world to bring together cancer researchers from every discipline. It's a special year for us, too, because this marks our 110th anniversary. We were founded in Washington, D.C., and it's very fitting that at our 110th anniversary, we go back to Washington, D.C. It is always difficult to predict exactly what's going to be reported at a meeting that looks at new scientific results. But I think we're going to continue to hear about new information and new breakthroughs about the use of immunotherapy of various sorts for cancer. I believe that we'll hear a lot of updates about better ways to practice precision medicine, if you will. And I hope that we're going to hear new basic science results that will have clinical implications that we can't even begin to imagine right now. Today's science will turn out to be tomorrow's treatments. There are so many areas where we're seeing the value of basic science research, which is now coming into clinical practice. We're excited about all of the work that's been done on the immune system in the past, and which is now beginning to bear fruit for treatment of all sorts of cancers, and, and where there might also be the possibility for prevention strategies. A lot of information that's emerging about the utility of things like the Human Genome Project and the Cancer Genome Atlas, which are now coming to fruition in the form of precision medicine approaches, being able to look at molecular aberrations and try to pair them with targeted therapies. I think we're also going to hear more work about implementation science. How do we take what we know today and make sure that it's into practice to benefit everybody? I'm so excited about so many of the things we're going to hear about. I'm excited to think that during the course of my career, we really are seeing useful, tolerable, efficacious immunotherapy approaches that are in clinical practice, and that we're now in a position where we can try to think about how to target them more precisely. I'm excited about the changes that we see in our genome analyses that are beginning to also bear fruit in terms of selection of therapy. I'm looking forward to some of the more basic science applications or discussions, for example, things like the discussion of CRISPR, um, a novel technique which is just coming into clinical investigation now and where I think we have a lot of hopes that it may have an impact in the future. Um, and I'm also very pleased that we're going to hear a lot about those aspects of prevention and early detection, which are so important as we try to think about how to minimize the burden of cancer. It's also very clear to us that we're not going to be able to treat our way out of cancer, that we're going to have to think about a combination of approaches that includes prevention, early detection and treatment, and all of these approaches are going to be informed by good science. Certainly the most exciting um, innovation that we're seeing over the last couple of years is translating our understanding of very basic immunology, our basic understanding about the immune system, about what goes wrong with the immune system when cancer develops, and be able to take that information and now think about how to target that, how to take advantage of that from a therapeutic perspective. But you know, that's just one example. I think that we're also seeing how information about DNA sequencing, which was a pretty basic science question for a while, um, how sequencing of tumors and sequencing of germline DNA can lead to actionable clinical decisions that can be made um, to treat individual cancers, or in some cases with germline mutations to think about prevention strategies. So these are just a couple of the areas where basic science research is having an immediate impact on clinical practice. I can't imagine a more exciting place for a young scientist to really cut their teeth in scientific meetings than the ACR annual meeting. There are so many topics that are covered. There are so many opportunities to hear about science with which you're familiar and science that you should become familiar with and maybe science you didn't even know anything about. ACR also offers the opportunity for young scientists to present their own work in the form of poster sessions and sometimes as oral presentations. And it gives them the opportunity to network with investigators across the spectrum, people in their own field, people in other fields, older investigators, peer investigators. Um, it's the perfect opportunity for a young investigator to come into our field and to really interact with our colleagues and across our disciplines.